Hi, this is Joe Brockmeyer. We're going to be uh, taking a look today at Linux administration, specifically getting to know them. Uh, this is part of the Linux Foundation's webinar series. Let's go ahead and start with the first slide and talk a little bit about Vim. What's Vim and why do you want it? Uh, Vim is one of the most popular VI clones. It's a text editor and it's found on most Linux distributions. Um, any system administrator is going to need a good text editor to work with configuration files and so forth. And Vim is the one that can be found on just about any Linux distribution, um, even with the most minimal installs. You can also use it very easily over SSH and remote connections. There's no GUI required, although Vim does have one, uh, but there's no, Vim, there's no Vim GUI required to work with it, so it's easy to work with over a shell and remote connections. Uh, Vim is a modal editor. It's a little bit different than what you're used to probably if you're coming from Windows or the Mac or from graphical text editors in general. Uh, it, operates, it operates in different modes for insertion, editing, movement commands, and so forth. What that means is your alpha keys actually do different things depending on what mode Vim is in, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, it's not simple to learn. I don't want to sell you a bill of goods here. It is a little bit complex, but it's also very rewarding and it's very useful. And if you're going to be working with Linux systems, you want to know Vim because it is ubiquitous. Uh, you may not be able to get to any other text editor on other systems when you need to work with them, but you can always, almost always count on Vim being there or some, uh, some form of a VI clone. So if you know the basics of how to move around and edit within Vim, you can do pretty well by using Vim. Let's go ahead and move to the next slide there and let's talk about how you can get started with Vim. You'll need to pull up a console or be at a terminal and you can start Vim by just typing VI or Vim plus the file name if you want to use a file. Um, to get into insert mode, which is when you're going to be typing and working with text, you want to type I to get into the regular insert mode or you can type O or capital O to open a line above or below a cursor. This makes it uh, easier to start on a line below or above the line you're currently on or to insert a new line. Uh, if you're working in configuration files especially, this is particularly useful. Now, in insert mode, your alpha keys basically do what you expect them to do. That is, when you type A, you get an A. When you type H, you get an H. Um, and that's pretty straightforward and normal for most folks. Uh, but then when you want to start entering commands, you actually want to leave the insert mode, and you can do that by hitting escape. Uh, when you hit escape, Vim enters what's called the command mode, um, and then the movement keys and uh, so forth are actually the same alpha keys that you use to enter text. So, for example, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail, the H, J, K, and L keys will actually move you throughout the file instead of entering those characters. Now, there are other operations that you want to perform that you don't perform with the command keys. You actually enter longer strings of commands, and you enter this mode by hitting the colon when you're in the command mode. So basically, to go from insert mode to last line mode, you would hit I to be in the insert mode. Then you would hit escape to enter command mode, and then you would hit the colon to start typing in a command. And as we get further in the presentation and the webinar, We'll talk a little bit about some of the commands that you'll want to run and some of the things that you can do. So let's go ahead and move to the next slide and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about some of the standard movement keys. Um, so as we said before, um, the movement keys are your standard keys. So for example, H will move the cursor one space to the left. J will move the cursor down one line. K will move it up one line, L will move it to the right. That's a little bit counterintuitive, uh, except when you look at the keyboard and you realize that the L key is to the right and the H key is to the left. Uh, by the way, you probably want to go ahead and have your terminal open or have some file open in Vim so that you can be working along as we're talking here. Um, if you want to move to the beginning of a line, you want to hit the zero key. I'm not sure how clear that is on the slide, but that's a zero. Uh, if you want to move to the end of a line, you want to type the dollar sign. Um, w will move the cursor forward one, one word. B will move it backwards one word. 
These might sound a little bit counterintuitive or hard to get used to, but if you actually...